AMD's latest and greatest Ryzen 7000 processors are here, nearly sort of. And with every new lineup of CPUs comes a range of new exciting motherboards with features we've not seen before, prices we've probably not seen before, and connectivity that is brand new to the market. And Ryzen 7000 is no different. With this in mind, we've flown over to Cologne in Germany. Big shout out to the guys at Asus for bringing us over to take a look at their latest and greatest X670 and X670E designs. Now we're gonna work through the range of motherboards that they've got on show talking a little bit about some of the features that are available and what that perhaps indicates to us around Ryzen 7000. Now this is their Prime board. Prime boards are typically Asus's slightly cheaper designs on the market and this one is no different. X670 isn't going to come particularly cheap but that's because of the features that are available, many of which are things we've simply not yet had to market. This board of course supports DDR5 memory out the box. It's important to note that all of these new boards do as standard. There are no motherboards on any chipsets that support DDR4 for Ryzen 7000, at least not that I'm aware of, with PCI 5 for your SSD. If you take a look at the rear I.O., we've actually got a pretty good I.O. here. The highest USB-C port is 20 gigabits per second, with USB type A's as well, and a 2.5 gig Ethernet. Wi-Fi 6E is standard across the Asus range, and we've got all of our audio ports, but sadly no optical out. Asus, I was hoping you were going to give me that on the Prime board. I think we'll have to reserve judgment as to how expensive this board is, as to whether the lack of a optical SPDIF connector is a major downside. Now, if we take a look at their top motherboard next this is the next in the line and as if by magic it appears from out of frame this is like that moment from blue peter here in the uk if you ever watched that as a kid where they were like here's one we prepared earlier now this is dare i say it quite similar to the prime board in fact if you take a look at the rear io connectivity pretty much all of the ports are the same the only thing is that our prime board lacks one of the usb a 20 gigabit connections or 10 gigabit connections favoring it for a normal what looks to be 5 gigabit port on the front of the board you've of course got this new socket as well which sort of follows the Intel LGA philosophy, shall we say, where the pins are on the socket and not on the processor. This is to allow Ryzen processors to catch up with all the PCIe Gen 5, DDR5 features that of course we already have on Intel 12th Gen. And I mean, hopefully surpass them, who knows? M.2 shielding is pretty frequent throughout, apart from the one slot which lacks it. And you'll notice this board, while nice, is definitely more simple. Take a look, for example, at the back of this motherboard compared to the M80X Crosshair. Look at the difference in the number of circuits on the motherboard. This is a much more clear PCB, which does have a bearing. The more things you're cramming onto a motherboard, the more beefy your PCB is going to be at the rear. Now then, before we jump into what I'd call the really exciting designs, they've next up got their ProArt model. Now this is exciting in its own way. It's definitely aimed at more of that professional workspace environment as opposed to a consumer board. So the idea is it gives you all the connectivity features you could want, represented by some of the USB 40 gigabit ports on the rear panel. 40 gigabits per second of bandwidth on these new generation of processors is pretty crazy. You've of course got your four RAM DIMM slots with this really sleek VRM cooling design, integrated rear I.O. shield and rear I.O. cover. You've got some PCI Generation 5, much of the same to be honest with you. And if we take a look at the rear I.O. on this one, you actually do get quite a bit more than on the Tough and on our Prime motherboards. So you can see we've got 10 gigabit USB-A pretty much throughout, 40 gigabit USB-C, not once, but twice. You've then also got a 20 gigabit USB-C port. The connections on these things are insane. Your audio ports on the Pro App board are really limited by comparison. You lose, for example, on the rear I.O. optical audio, but I think you'll be able to get this as like an adding card. Otherwise though, the whole thing makes a lot of sense. The PCB, as you can see, is absolutely stacked, which is something we really, really like to see. And overall, just a really nice board. If we work up the range a little bit further, you'll also then notice we've got their Crosshair Hero board. Now the Hero board has long been my favorite SKU on the Intel and the AMD side of things for Asus. It gives you all of those high-end features from the higher-end chipset. Of course, you've got X670 and X670E for extreme at play here. For example, if we look at the rear I.O., you can see it's stacked with connectivity. We've got this DisplayPort over USB-C, 40 gigabit per second, so loads and loads of bandwidth on these. We've got Wi-Fi 6E, optical audio, your normal 3.5mm, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It gives you a lot of the bells and whistles that you'd expect from this top-end generation without necessarily the price that you'd pay for the Crosshair Extreme. Now, the Crosshair Extreme X670E design really is something to be marveled. Would you just look at this? Now, this is one of the heaviest motherboards I've ever felt, apart from one from MSI, which I shall not name, <coughs> the godlike. If you take a look at the rear, you can see we've got this really, really nice shielding on the back of the PCB. I mean, I don't know what you'd have to do to need this sort of shielding in a build, but great to have nevertheless. If you take a look here, you've got Asus's PCI release catch that we've seen on some of their latest boards. And one thing that I found really cool is an automatic switcher for overclocking. Now, previously, that was only available on their very top end boards, but apparently times are changing. And what that means is you can actually enable your all core overclocks or revert back to the CPU's stock boost clock speeds on a single core. That might mean that you can get a faster speed on all 
cores, but it limits your overall top speed of a single core. With Asus in their new X670 and X670E lineups, you get that across the board. That means you're guaranteed to get some of the best performance possible with that automatic switch in between the all core overclock and the single core clock. Now, I'll admit that's a very niche feature that only some of our most enthusiast viewers are gonna be interested in, but great to see nevertheless. Now, Asus haven't got a huge range of smaller form factor boards on show. They've got this nice little Crosshair Micro ATX, the Gene design. I thought it was called the Genie. No, the Gene, not the Genie. You get some nice connectivity at the rear. Overall, pretty stunning board in that nice Micro ATX form factor. And something that it looks pretty good off the bat. I mean, the Micro ATX boards in this area are gonna leave you with some sacrifices that you probably don't wanna make. Mini ITX, of course, goes a step further. There's more sacrifices at play, but equally you have got more to gain because of course that smaller form factor is much more versatile for some of those smaller builds too. Asus have also released a couple of new products today that we were pretty interested to see. A new SFX power supply, which currently comes in 850 watt capacities, but they say is gonna to go to 1200, supporting of course the rumored next gen GPUs, which we know are gonna be pretty power hungry with PCI generation five. They've got some like new headphones. They've got a 42 and a 48 inch OLED monitor with a 0.1 millisecond greater grow response time and a 138 hertz refresh rate alongside some new coolers with Acer Tech blocks that should hopefully do a better job of cooling these new Ryzen CPUs because my gut reaction is they're probably gonna run quite warm out of the box and overall a range of other designs that were pretty nice to see. Taking a look at some of the things that we've learned today that we perhaps didn't know already about AMD Ryzen 7000. A, it sounds like they're gonna be coming very soon, which is always great to see. And B, it looks like some of the connectivity standards really are going to blow some of Intel's 12th gen options out of the water. Now, of course, we're expecting Intel 13th gen later this year, or at least that's my sort of tingling feeling. I'm not saying it's necessarily right, but of course, PCI Gen 5 now matches with Intel. You've got all of those USB 4 ports, which we don't have with Intel Z690 chipsets, and of course, DDR5 memory support. The only catch here with the new AMD processors is that it's DDR5 only, no DDR4 support, which is gonna be interesting to see. A big thanks to Asus for flying us out here to Cologne to take a look at their new X670 range of motherboards. Some definitely very, very exciting stuff. And make sure to get subscribed if you're not already, because we'll be featuring all of these in builds very, very soon with a bigger deep dive here on the channel. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.